Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I enjoy watching award ceremonies. It's fun, but I don't take them seriously, right? As the late great actor Paul Newman remarked shortly before he died, how could you really decide who was the best actor? Especially given the fact that these actors are dealing with different directors, different co-stars, different producers. How do you know who's doing the most with the least? How do you know who has gotten the most out of what they're working with? Right? So, I really view these award ceremonies as political events where you have a group, right? The Motion Picture Academy or in this case, the Boxing Writers Association of America, who has shared values and who wants to reinforce those values by coming together <clears throat> in really a ceremony that recognizes accomplishment, but is done with the understanding that not everyone has the same information, right? Not every boxing trainer out there is working with the same talent base or has accomplished the same results. Freddie Roach just won Trainer of the Year for 2013. Now I'm a big fan of Freddie's. I consider Freddie Roach to be a great trainer. I'll agree that Freddie Roach had some success in 2013, he trained Miguel Cotto, revamped his style a bit. Cotto beat Delvin Rodriguez. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he helped Manny Pacquiao on his comeback. Manny Pacquiao beat Brandon Rios. Okay, excellent. What I want people to do is to also realize that there are some other trainers out there in the world of boxing who, in my opinion, had at least as good a year as Freddie Roach. Right? Freddie Roach is known. Freddie Roach deserves a lot of adoration. He certainly has been a key part of some of boxing's big fights. No question about it. He also learned from one of the trainers who I consider to be one of the best ever, Eddie Futch, who used to train Riddick Bowe and Joe Fraser. Okay, fair enough. I just want you to think about the fact, though, that Miguel Cotto was favored over Delvin Rodriguez. Manny Pacquiao was favored over Brandon Rios. Right? Those fights aren't the kind of fights where you think that the trainer has really significantly helped beat the odds. Also, of course, in those fights, Freddie Roach is working with guys who, prior to the fights, had won multiple titles in different weight classes. Right? Let's also look at the opponents. Brandon Rios, not really a welterweight. Right? The marketing arm, top rank, they can market this. You know, they could sell water to fishermen. Right? The bottom line is weight classes matter. We're the hardcore boxing fan here online, and we know Brandon Rios really wasn't an elite welterweight before he fought Manny Pacquiao. Let's talk about some other trainers briefly. Men who, quite frankly, 
help their fighters in some big fights that were hard to call before the fights took place. Sometimes these fights took place in their opponent's backyard. And let me also point out the obvious too, because life is riddled with double standards. Life's unfair. But just understand, these guys don't have the popularity with the boxing writers that someone like Freddie Roach has. I don't believe any of these guys could recover from the off day Freddie Roach had when he hurled anti-Semitic and ethnic slurs right at Robert Garcia's camp at Ellie's setback shortly before the Manny Pacquiao Brandon Rios fight right so just understand these guys aren't given the benefit of the doubt which Freddie Roach has received from the Boxing Writers Association of America right some of the trainers you should take a look at especially to the gambling crowd are John David Jackson who trains Sergei Kovalev right the champ at light heavyweight he has done a simply spectacular job you tell me how Adonis Stevenson who's trained by Sugar Hill can be on everyone's short list for fighter of the year keep in mind we're talking about dangerous fights against former titleists but yet his trainer didn't win trainer of the year right Sugar Hill is someone who you need to look at as a superstar trainer Joel Diaz who trains Timothy Bradley and his brother Julio Diaz. Now forget Bradley for a second. Who, of course, beat Richland Provodnikov, comes back, right, and beats Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Something, by the way, Manny Pacquiao did not do in his last fight. Right? Understand that Joel Diaz trained his brother who fought Amir Khan and I'll tell you what he gave Khan all he could handle keep in mind too Diaz in that fight was the underdog not a favorite he gave Khan all he could handle in one of the years better boxing performances if you're looking in terms of value added by the trainer I would suggest you look at that fight how about Nassim Richardson? Just look at what Bernard Hopkins is doing. Let's not take Hopkins for granted. You're not talking about a guy in his mid-40s. You're talking about a guy in his late 40s. Right? Outside of Hopkins, if we saw other fighters fighting men 10 15, sometimes 20 years younger than them, we would say this is preposterous. But yet, Nassim Richardson has Hopkins winning these fights. Understand, too, it's hard to accuse Hopkins of cherry picking when he's fighting champions. You know, so Hopkins still to this day one of the world's best at light heavy I would say his trainer is also one of the world's best Nassim Richardson let's go further the work done with Marcus Maidana has been simply breathtaking he doesn't even look like the same fighter that he was before he got with his trainer Robert Garcia of course, in terms of upsets of the year, isn't Marcus Maidana's victory over Adrian Broner on your short list? Here again, the gamblers know readily. Marcus Maidana was an underdog in that fight. He wasn't the favorite. That fight isn't a one-punch fight. 
That fight's a methodical beatdown. Over 12 rounds. Marcus Maidana outboxes. Previously unbeaten. Adrian Broner. Think about it. Marcus Maidana's just one fighter who had a great year under Robert Garcia. Garcia also is the co-trainer of Mikey Garcia with his father, Eduardo. Right? I would say Robert Garcia had a great year. Now, I know some are going to say, well, didn't Brandon Rios lose to Manny Pacquiao? Here again, Brandon Rios was the underdog in that fight. Right? The expectation wasn't for Brandon Rios to beat Manny Pacquiao. Right? And so I hope you keep an eye on Robert Garcia. Let me just say, is there anyone in a big fight in 2013 who was more prepared from the opening bell than Floyd Mayweather Jr.? From the opening bell, Floyd Mayweather Jr. dominated two world-class opponents. Dominated them. These fights are over by the time you get to the eighth round. Right? Mayweather is not only prepared, but then he goes out and dominates these guys in such a way that in the Saul Alvarez fight, and weren't we talking about Saul Alvarez as one of boxing's best pound for pound? Wasn't Oscar De La Hoya himself going overboard, talking about how Saul Alvarez would beat Floyd Mayweather Jr.? In the Saul Alvarez fight, in real time, as the fight was unfolding, several pundits online here, including Dan Rayfield of ESPN, had Floyd pitching a shutout. A shutout. Think about it. When you have performances as dominant as Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s performances have been, don't you have to recognize what his trainer, Floyd Mayweather Sr., is doing? Let me go another step. Your fighter has a torn shoulder, has had to cancel fights. Then he comes back against an unbeaten fighter, Edwin Rodriguez, right, in a fight for the title. There's no easy fight in between. Your guy's fresh off an injury, and he's back in the ring against an unbeaten young lion. Well, that's what happened to Andre Ward and his trainer, Virgil Hunter. Let me tell you, the work Hunter's doing is remarkable. Let's roll back the clock a little bit. One of the hardest men, I would say, to fight in boxing is Eris Landy Lara. Very difficult guy. Now, when you look at... Lara against Alfredo Angulo. And when you consider the visa problems Angulo had, when you consider the challenges Angulo has faced, and when you realize that going into that fight, people expected Lara to dominate Angulo. Let me ask you, didn't Angulo give you one of the best performances of the year? You know, I like to say knockouts cause amnesia. Let me go further and say losses cause amnesia. Yes, Angulo lost that fight. You know what? He knocks down Arislandi Lara twice. How many guys in the sport of boxing within the area code 
of Laura's weight class can do that. I thought Angulo looked inspired under Virgil Hunter. Inspired. I thought that was one of the year's best performances against a very slick opponent. Right, in terms of what Hunter was working with, the challenges he faced, again, Andre Ward Rusty out of the ring so badly injured not only was the Kelly Pavlik fight canceled but Ward underwent surgery right then of course you know Angulo visa problems then he's in with a slick opponent when you add in the fact that Hunter is also reconstructing the style of Amir Khan. Let's just say he's doing tremendous work. Right? Let me just say two. And again, forget official results. Let's go with our eyes. Didn't you think? In fact, didn't you know that Brian Vera beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.? The same fight with a different result. Wouldn't Ronnie Shields be on this list? Right, Ronnie Shields, of course, was in Vera's corner that night. That should have been the upset of the year. In fact, that was the upset of the year, except for the scorecards. Right? Factor in the fact that Ronnie Shields was also in Arislandi Lara's corner. And my point to you is simply, and let me point out the obvious too. Vera was a big underdog against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Big underdog. Right? So my point to you is simply, as you're looking at these Boxing Writers Association of America awards, just understand that just like the Oscar doesn't necessarily confirm that the winner gave the best acting performance of the year, nor do the awards given by the Boxing Writers Association of America I'm not saying anyone did anything wrong or what have you. But it's just the nature of these things. That some great performances are overlooked. Right? That we forget that some of these fighters were underdogs. Big underdogs. We forget that some of these fighters we're coming off injury. Right? We forget that some of these fighters were flat out robbed. Right? And so, with all of that said, let me just say, I hope you take a look at Ronnie Shields, at Sugar Hill, at John David Jackson, as Joel Diaz, at Robert Garcia, at Nassim Richardson, at Floyd Mayweather Sr. Right? These guys had a great year in 2013. Whether they win awards or not, we as boxing fans need to know who these men are. Let me hear from you. If there's a trainer out there that I missed, who you thought had a pretty good 2013, Let's have our own personal awards here in the comment section to this video. Tell us who that trainer is. Mention the fights. If you know the odds, um, if there's a particular fight or a particular sequence where, you know, a fighter goes to the corner and a trainer gives him great advice, let us know what that is so we can all take a look at the film. Thanks for stopping by.